One more thing to note is that it's possible that I'm actually double clicking on empty space, like say I double click on the sky. So if that happens, this compute 3D intersection will return now, you know, because I didn't click on anything 3D. So you can check for that by detecting whether it's now. And if not, well, just say click on empty space. Okay. So this uh, pattern of listening to a click and then doing this compute 3D intersection is used very frequently. Later on, when we are creating place marks, you know, when you decide, oh, I want to put a place mark here, then you can use this pattern to find out what the 3D coordinates should be. Okay. This is also another reason why, I, I say again, the 3D coordinate system, the stuff that you deal with in Germanium, is very surface level. Yes, the numbers look uh, strange, you know, but you didn't have to work them out. You, know, you can just directly retrieve them from Germanium. Okay, so, uh, yeah, please exercise the pattern later. Okay, no, no we're not having a second break. Okay, so uh, that finishes the buildings and the eye. So let's move on to the place marks. Okay, now place marks are a way for you to annotate the building, you know, to add more information to the building. Now the building model, okay, uh, you may notice so far that you don't actually change the building much. You know, you just retrieve data about it. You ask for things like uh, its floor height and you turn it on and off. Okay? Changing the building itself is usually done in the modeling step um, before, before any programming is done. Okay, this is because uh, modeling is a very, very complex and also a very processor intensive step. So we don't do it at runtime. Okay? However, you, know, uh, you want to add more information to your building. Like in this case, uh, this particular user is wants to know to how to get to Let's Go Digital. Okay, so this place mark is dynamically added to show him how to get there. You can embed other information like if uh, JBooks is having a promotion, uh, you can actually put all the promotion details into the balloon okay, uh, and have links uh, or even like things like printable coupons and stuff. Okay, so this is all done through creating and adding place marks to the scene. Okay, so what makes up a place mark? Okay. So a place mark consists of these few parts. Okay. So a place mark, okay, the, the structure of the diagram is a place mark has a geometry, has a style set, the style set has a geometry style. Okay. So the place mark object itself uh, just stores the raw information. So the name of the place mark, the description of the place mark, and the content of the place mark. Okay. At this point, if you just have the place mark alone, you don't know where it is, you know, it has no place. Okay, this is specified in the geometry. So the geometry is the fundamental shape of the place mark. Okay, what I mean by fundamental shape is, uh, okay, the most common type are points. Okay, so a point saying, you are here, or let's meet up here, or this is the main entrance. So these are points. Okay? And at this point, you are just interested in where the thing is. You know? You're not interested in what it looks like yet. Okay? Where what it looks like is specified instead in the geometry style. Okay, so the geometry style controls the visual look of the place mark. Okay, so you can have a point, okay, which looks like a diamond, a point which looks like an arrow, a point which looks like an icon. Okay, so the geometry is separated from the style. Uh, very very similar to HTML and CSS. You know, you can have a list. So the list is your source data. Then you can choose how to style that list, whether you uh, use numbered bullets, um, squares, diamonds, uh, what form you're using. So the style is separate. So very similarly, the geometry is the data. The geometry style is the look. Okay. Uh, I, won't, I won't describe the style set now. Uh, it'll become clearer later. Okay, so the types, the combinations of geometries and styles which are valid. Okay, just briefly, like the diamond point. Okay, there are three looks for points. Lines and uh, lines and polygons have only one look each. Okay, so they look like this. So if you created a place mark, uh, assigned it a point geometry, and gave it a diamond style, this is what you get. Okay, and the diamond style allows you to do things like change the color of the diamond. In this case, yellow. Okay, it can allows you to change the dimensions of the diamond. So, and this place mark is given the name my place mark, you know, and this is specified in the place mark object itself. The position of this place mark is down here at the point of the diamond. 
Okay, and uh, the coordinates you specify in the point geometry. Okay. Very similarly to the diamond, that's the arrow. Okay, so you can see that all the stuff up here is exactly the same. We just changed the style. Okay, so it's actually still pointing to the same point, uh, just using a red arrow instead. And the last for the points is the icon style. So instead of using a 3D diamond or 3D arrow, you can use an image to mark a point. And this is actually the most commonly used place mark. If you use Google Maps, Google Earth, you've seen thousands of these. Because okay? uh, they are very uh, nice, catchy to look at and easy to use. Okay? So for these are the three point style, the three, three point types. Then there's a the line, okay? or more specifically it's the line string geometry. Okay? Because one line is just two points. Okay? So you have a connected bunch of lines. It's called a line string. Okay? So you can give it a style. Uh, in this case, you set it to blue color. You can change the pattern of the line. And you can even uh, animate the line also to like, indicate direction, uh, yeah, which we will see later. And the last type is the polygon. Okay. So in this case, it's actually uh, okay, the polygon is not just your squares, pentagons, hexagons, not just your regular polygons. It's also any shape. So you specify the corner points and Germanium will fill in the polygon for you. And you can optionally also give it a thickness. Uh. So in this case, it's actually a rectangular polygon and given a certain amount of thickness, uh, so you end up with a cuboid. Okay. Aside from the types, you can also customize the label you know, by adding a label style to the style set. Okay. So in this case, I can change the color of the label. And lastly, you can also customize the look of the balloon that the user sees when he clicks the place mark. Okay, so in this case, it's just changing the color. Okay, and if you put it all together, this is what you get. Okay, you have a place mark. You have a have a geometry which can be one of these types. Uh, you can choose one of the geometry styles, and uh, they are, they match up to the geometry. Optionally, you can specify a label and a balloon style. Okay, and this is why there's a style set so that you can lump all them together and uh, move them around. Okay. So let's go take a look at what it looks like programmatically. Makes things much clearer. Okay, so we start with the most basic one, which is the point place mark. Clear this. Okay, so this sample well, creates the place mark, gives it a name, a point place mark, okay. creates the point geometry. Okay, the thing that was on the left side, but specifies the 3D coordinates that the point has, okay, and then sets the geometry of this place mark. And finally, we add it to the Germanium world. Uh. So you can create all these place marks uh, beforehand, and then when you want it to appear, that's when you add the place mark to the world. Okay? So you just run it, yeah, it's very straightforward. At 202, it created a point place mark. Okay? Now, one thing to note is, yeah, wh why, why does it appear as a diamond when I didn't specify any diamond style? Okay. Now this is because the, each placemark type actually has a default. Okay. So the default for a point is a di uh, gray diamond, okay. the default for the line is a white line, and the default for the polygon is a white polygon. Okay. So instead, if we want to have control over what it looks like, then we have to specify the style, okay, and okay, here's where it gets a bit more interesting. Okay, let's run, run it first. Okay, so yeah, you notice that it actually downloaded the icon. Okay, so what happened here was same thing, created a point place mark. You know, we have different coordinates, three zero two now. Okay, and I specified an icon style. Okay, this icon style had a, I gave it a URL. So you can just see this uh, image by itself. <coughs> yeah. So that's just the image by itself. Like, I just hosted as an image. 